Good evening, welcome back to the channel. Tonight uh, it's a night with the moon out. And then it hit me, star trails. Star trails seem to be a brilliant option if the moon is out, but I've never done it. But tonight I'm going to give it a swirl, a twist, a turn. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> greeted by sheep and as you can see we have to look out where we put our feet and our tripod. So I'm now trying to align the top of the lighthouse more or less with Polaris because you know uh, as the earth rotates uh, it looks like uh, yeah the stars are rotating um, around Polaris around the North Star so I'm hoping to get a composition to get that yeah Polaris star twirl swirl effect. I've recently made a big upgrade to my tripod. Velcro strips, check this out. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So after a bit of fiddling around uh, with my composition and with my settings, uh, both of our cameras are now uh, shooting. I'm uh, shooting at 14 millimeters. I wanted uh, yeah, to go in a bit tighter at 24 millimeters so that the stars trail faster. But uh, yeah, the composition just wasn't that nice. So uh, yeah, 14 millimeter uh, ISO 400 to get a maximum dynamic range. I hope to get some color out of my uh, stars. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, let the cameras run for about, uh, about an hour or so and uh, we'll see uh, how it comes out. For me the first time. For Kane, uh, he has done it uh, before. So uh, you have any three, tips for me? Three years ago. <laughs> three years ago, um, well, more experience than me. No, the only tip I can give is uh, just shoot as lot of data as you can. Yeah, so it, that you get the, longer trails. The longer trails, the nicer the image. Yeah, cool. So let's see uh, how long we can go on before the clouds uh, come rolling in because they come in and out. But uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how the software uh, handles that. So far, so good. It didn't take long before our first visitor arrived. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we are getting checked out by security. So uh, let's uh, see what they uh, have to say. So that uh, was the police, but uh, I explained what we, we were doing and uh, he was fine with it. Uh, yeah, the people who uh, lived here uh, on the other side of the street, uh, they uh, thought we were dealing drugs or something, but uh, I told them we're just making star drills, uh, so it was okay. <laughs> now that security was taken care of and the cameras were running, it was time to relax a bit. Testun, testun, testun. So uh, we have been sitting here on the dike uh, at the water for about half an hour. Uh, yeah, half an hour for me. Corné uh, has been sitting here for about an hour because he's been shooting about two times uh, as much as I am, as is always the case. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are sitting at this uh, lighthouse, uh, Lighthouse de Oude Zeug. And uh, this lighthouse was built in 1918 and it was placed in a harbor nearby. And the funny thing is, in 1930 it was uh, replaced to this location until it uh, went out of use in 2009. And there's not a light in it anymore. So uh, yeah, we hope that helps us uh, to get more stars out so that the light won't interfere with our star trails. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. About an hour later, we decided to check if our cameras were behaving. Okay, so the camera has been running for about uh, one hour and five minutes. So uh, yeah, some clouds were passing by. But uh, yeah, let's uh, see if we have enough data to uh, make a nice star trail out of it. Look at this, one hour of data on the trash. It's only one exposure of 4,000 seconds. <laughs> no. 
Okay, so let me explain what happened here. I set my remote control to make continuous exposures with an as small as possible pause of 1 second between shots. Apparently my camera or SD card can only handle at least 4 to 5 seconds in between, otherwise it would just keep on exposing. A word of caution if you are ever going to try the same. Okay, so after I uh, noticed my uh, camera has been making one exposure of 4000 seconds, uh, Corne is now uh, going home. Um, so yeah, uh, Corne was more successful than I was, I think. Yeah, I think I got some good shots, yeah. Cool. We'll see. Yeah, so um, we're now going to the office where I'll show you how to make a star trail uh, of how to post-process a star trail. Uh, I have my camera running again, but there are clouds coming in, so I might have to work with Corne's data. But uh, yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> now you can see how good data looks like. I'm afraid so. <laughs> As I was afraid of, the clouds ruined my chance to reshoot the star trail this night. However, I did manage to salvage this fun capture where I tried to make the clouds an integral part of the composition. As well as this quick shot where I felt like the moonlit landscape looked like we were on the moon itself. While I could have used Kone's sky data, I just couldn't let it go entirely and decided to try again a couple of days later. Well, we're not back in the office, obviously, but I'm uh, here three days later uh, with Martijn. Hey guys. And uh, yeah, as you can see behind me, uh, there I think, the moon is out and most of the time it means if the moon is out, the skies are clear. Don't you think so? Yeah, unfortunately it is. Yeah. <laughs> is it only us or let us know in the comments. Well, uh, we've come to a lookout or a bird watching tower and uh, I'm going to re-attempt to make star trails. See you at the tower. As you can see, we have found the lookout tower. Um, I have two plans tonight. And the first is uh, yeah, just to uh, shoot a star trail with this tower included. So uh, we have the foreground and we have the stars trailing and then I'm going to run it through star stacks. And the second plan is uh, to put my camera, which I was shooting with uh, two, three days ago, uh, with only sky at exactly the same settings, exactly the same focal length and use that star trail sky shot and blend it into the foreground, which I shot a couple of days ago to salvage the shot. So let's see how it goes. Well, let me tell you, this evening went way more smooth. Nice. All right. All right, so uh, our cameras uh, are finishing up right now. Uh, after sitting here and uh, enjoying the night sky for about uh, two and a half hours, my I let my uh, Fuji camera shoot for uh, yeah until the battery ran out for about one and a half hours, and my Canon is uh, still shooting behind it. But I'll uh, stop it and uh, hopefully I can use that footage for uh, for the lighthouse. How uh, what did you think of the night, uh, Martijn? Yeah, it was quite successful. So uh, I think we have a good start row. Yeah. I think I made around 230 pictures, so... Oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm curious how that turns out. Let's go to the office and see how StarStacks works. So here we are back in the office. I have uh, loaded all my images into Lightroom and uh, you can see uh, from this tower I have made uh, about 100 shots all uh, around, uh, all around, <laughs> all at exactly 50 seconds. And uh, yeah, uh, the first thing you'll have to do is some pre-processing in, uh, in Lightroom. Uh, or uh, the other software you are using. Uh, let's click on develop and you can see that I haven't changed uh, a lot. I have fiddled around with the white balance just a bit. Um, I have uh, reduced the highlights so that my horizon line is a bit more smooth, uh, up to the whites a bit to get some, yeah, just a little bit more uh, color, but yeah, uh, all pretty basic. Um, what you should do in this stage is, uh, yeah, if you really want to do it uh, correctly, then um, look at every frame and remove airplane and satellite trails at this stage. I didn't do it and I regret it because it uh, cost me a lot of time uh, removing uh, star, uh, star just <laughs> removing airplane and satellite trails uh, in the uh, stacked result. 
Um, but okay, um, yeah, uh, after I am happy with the basic pre-processing settings, I sync this uh, to all the other images and I export them as TIFF files. To, uh, yeah, a TIFF file has uh, more data in it uh, that we can work with than a JPEG file, for example. So while the uh, TIFFs uh, have been uh, exported from Lightroom, uh, we are going to uh, use software that makes star trails for us. Uh, I have used star stacks uh, made available by uh, a professor Marcus Entzweiler. If you just uh, Google uh, uh, star stacks, uh, you come to the right site. And it is a free software and it does a really good job. Um, before we go into star stacks uh, itself, uh, there is one man who deserves a big shout out. And that is Jan, uh, also known as AndesArt.ig on Instagram, or AndesArtig, uh, as they say it in German, I think. Um, yeah, uh, Jan helped me out a lot with uh, my settings in StarStacks. He also gave me uh, uh, about a hundred <laughs> uh, tips and tricks how to perfect my star trails. Uh, I uh, haven't even tried half of them yet, but I will definitely check them out the next time if I make a, make a star trail. So, yeah. Thanks so much, Jan. Uh, check out his, uh, his, his, his Instagram page. Uh, he has yeah, done some tremendous work. And also if you look, for example, to one of his latest star trails, yeah, you can see it looks beautiful. I mean, look at the color of these stars. And he also used a, uh, a star glow or a diffusion or mist filter on, uh, on a single shot so that yeah, the trails really get that nice diffused uh, glowing effect and also appear a bit larger. So yeah. Give him some love. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Okay, so now I have opened Starstacks, and the first thing we do is load the uh, exported TIFF files uh, into Starstacks. We just select them all with uh, Ctrl A, and I just drag and drop them here. And um, yeah, you can also use dark frames, but in this case, I haven't made dark frames. Uh, there are a yeah, various blending methods and uh, what I have read and heard online is that the best way is probably gap filling. So I used gap filling. Uh, gap filling, um, yeah, what it does, uh, if you uh, shoot on interval, uh, there is a small pause between shots and that leaves yeah, a sort of small gap between the trails and gap filling tries to... Uh, yeah, fill those uh, gaps and smooth out those uh, trails for you. Um, so, okay, gap filling, um, all the other stuff, yeah, you can fiddle around with, but we'll keep it simple for this tutorial. Uh, just go to this button and start processing. And we can see that Star Stacks is working on a beautiful star trail for us. Okay, StarStacks is done, uh, and yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, I'm really annoyed by those airplane and uh, uh, satellite uh, trails here, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, try to get rid of them in uh, in, in Photoshop. Uh, the next step you have to do in um, StarStacks is uh, you want uh, to fiddle around a bit with the uh, threshold settings of your gap filling. Uh, you basically want to select or make green uh, only the stars and uh, not your sky uh, and your foreground. In this case it's a bit difficult to find a good balance because there wasn't a lot of contrast in the sky because the moon was out so it was pretty light. Um, yeah I think I have used something somewhere around this and normally you would also want uh, yeah, the amount uh, to do uh, some work for you. Uh, the larger the amount of gap filling, the more it tries to fill the gaps. But if we increase that, we can see that it also sometimes, uh, in this case not, but sometimes it, it gets some... Yeah, the result is that it is getting some weird light artifacts here on the horizon, for example. So for now, I'll leave it uh, somewhere in the middle and I think that will be fine. Um, okay, uh, we will save it now and you have to uh, pay attention that you add .tiff to your file because otherwise it will save as a JPEG and you lose a lot of uh, data uh, where we can um, work with further in Photoshop. So I've loaded uh, the exported file from StarStacks, uh, the TIFF file, into Photoshop. 
And yeah, you can do a lot of things in Photoshop, of course, all uh, yeah, a matter of uh, personal taste. Uh, we will keep it pretty basic for now. Um, my main thing, what I have to do is uh, remove those satellite and airplane trails. So we'll work with the uh, spot healing brush tool. And if we zoom in a little on the trail, yeah, what you can do is just brush over a trail you don't want. And it normally does a pretty decent job. Uh, what you also can do is click on one end of the trail and then you hold your shift key and you click on the other end of a trail and it knows I have to delete all this. You have to be a bit careful, it's a bit trial and error because sometimes it leaves some weird artifacts like here. So I'll just click that and it looks a bit better. Uh, there are some weird artifacts. Here's another airplane trail. Uh, oh, they didn't do a really good job. So uh, yeah, it's a bit trial and error, just control Z it. And maybe only here yeah that's a bit better yeah, it's not perfect but well you can spend a lot of time on this uh, which i'm not going to do uh, for this tutorial but i have done uh, for my final result um, let's say for now we are happy with uh, with this shot uh, what i want to show you uh, i've also made a, a foreground shot where uh, we put a little light in the tower so that it creates yeah a nice a bit of orange glow and it's also a nice color contrast to the bluish sky because the moon was out but I don't want um, yeah I only want to use that uh, orange light from this picture and uh, how I blend it is I um, add a layer mask and the layer mask uh, we change um, uh, we invert by uh, pressing ctrl I on your keyboard and the um, Blending mode, I think it's best in this case to use lighten and then we brush um, over the layer mask. Sometimes uh, your brush is on black, but we don't want to uh, brush black on black. We want to brush white on black and yeah, we just paint in the light which we want. We have some edges here because otherwise the moon shadow looks a bit weird and here is also a bit of light. So yeah, that looks a, a lot better. Um, yeah, if you have spent uh, if you spend some more time on uh, yeah fine tuning, tweaking, uh, doing a bit of saturation, um, uh, maybe even make the star trails a bit bigger or smaller. Um, you get the following result, uh, which I'll show you in just a few seconds. Yeah, for now, uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the vlog and uh, hopefully also learned something. Um, I thank you again so much for watching and see you on the next one.